One popular misconception about the Igbo people, which Eurocentric scholars who first studied them propagated widely, is the notion that they were stateless before the arrival of uh, British uh, colonialism. This notion was based on the European worldview, which equated the idea of um, centralized monarchical systems and the often violent um, pursuit of empire um, with um, statehood. They equated monarchical system and empire with, um, uh, with statehood. Now, what these um, early scholars failed to appreciate about most Igbo groups was the egalitarian nature of a lot of Igbo societies. But before we look closely at Henri and Igbo Kingdom, which is quite unique and admirable, please remember that this channel cannot survive without your support. So please take a moment to support us by clicking on your um, subscription and notification buttons. Thank you. We'll come to the unique model of Henry's governance and expansion later. Now, like the case of most other African ethnic groups, the origin of the Igbo people who are found predominantly in southeastern areas of Nigeria is difficult to piece together because Again, it is steeped in oral tradition. Today, we will be looking at one of the most enduring cultures in Igbo land, the Umri. The home of the Igbo people, like I said, can be found in um, southeastern Nigeria. And the area is divided by the Niger River into two unequal sections the eastern region, which is the larger section, and the midwestern region. The, the Niger River, however, rather than being a barrier to cultural unity, has provided a solid means of communication in an area where many settlements claim different um, origins. Now, the Igbos are surrounded on all sides by other ethnic groups like the Ijo, um, the Ogoni, the Igala, the Tiv, the Yako, Edo, the Shekiri, the Bibio, and, and others. While some accounts insist that the Igbo are indigenous to where they are now, others suggest that they came from around the river Benue, while others suggest that the Igbo came from the land of Israel. The predecessor of the uh, of the um, of, of the present ruler of Onisha, one of the principal cities in Igbo land, Obi of Kagwe, is actually on record declaring a kinship between the Igbo and the biblical people of Israel in, with, in, the, same way that, um, in the same way that some Yoruba traditional rulers claim that, um, they are, uh, claim that um, a relationship to the Middle East through Lamorodo. According to the late Obi of Kagwe's account, the founder of Enri, whose name was Eri, who came from the Israelite um, tribe of Gad, traveled from Egypt, arrived at the confluence of the river Niger, Manu, and Anambra. This man named Eri then lived there as an alien among the people he met and somehow managed to become their high priest and judge in much the same way as a Samuel in the Bible ruled Israel. Now, while the jury is still 
out on the veracity of this uh, connection between Igbo land and uh, uh, between the Igbo and uh, Israel. One thing that scholars seem to agree on is the fact that Umri was one of the earliest settlements of Igbo speaking people. And um, according to Afibu, the Umri developed an egalitarian and highly centralized society headed by a priestly king known as Ezenri. The Umri also had highly developed agricultural practices, which some scholars believe was more advanced than uh, those of their contemporaries. Some accounts credit the people of Umri for discovering the secret of yam cultivation. The ability of uh, the Umri to cultivate this highly valued food product gave them advantage over their neighbors who needed to learn their secret to cultivate yam. This scientific breakthrough boosted the profile of the kingdom and its reputation as a commercial center spread easily far and wide. According to Anda and, uh, and Kuanda, around 900 AD, Unri also made a technical breakthrough in mastering the art of iron smelting. With iron technology, the Enri further advanced their ability to farm and hunt. But one of the most admirable things about the Enri is that they could easily have used their knowledge of iron smelting to uh, make war implements with which to dominate their neighbors. But they did not. Rather, Unri kingdom preferred peace and therefore prioritized trade and respect for the sanctity of human life. To ensure um, that its iron technology was not weaponized and uh, misused to cause bloodshed, the rulers of Enri, known as Ezenri, transformed weapons into ritual objects, thus militating against unnecessary violence. As such, when any of their neighbors, which uh, were under their influence, broke the uh, convention, such communities were outlawed by Unri priests and an embargo or curse Nso, was placed on them. The curse on Nso, was not lifted until a cleansing, a cleansing rite were, was performed. It was really admirable. Though not milit uh, militaristic in uh, its uh, foreign re relations, Unri was able to maintain a ritual or spiritual control on its neighbors. And according to uh, Walter Rodney, that formidable Caribbean scholar of African affairs, who also who studied uh, the Henry, it was widely believed that the streets of Henry were the roads of gods through which all who died in other parts of uh, Igbo land which were under Enri's influence, ascended to the spirit world. So this simple mythical um, reputation and the ritual importance of, uh, of the kingdom enabled the Ezenri to send delegates to other settlements. His delegates would then request those settlements to pledge their allegiance to Unri. It was a really peaceful way of, uh, of uh, expanding uh, uh, their control. So apart from this, and uh, unlike any other groups, 
Only diviners, priests, and blacksmiths enjoyed immunity to travel due to the value of their services to their uh, to the communities that they traveled to. Another another factor that is believed to have uh, strengthened the influence of Onri was the prestigious title of Ozo that was conferred mainly by uh, the kingdom, uh, the Onri kingdom to other parts of Igbo land. Holders of this title were well distributed across Igbo land, thus creating a link between other communities and the Enri. Again, according to Afibu, with this high level of influence, um, Enri traders and the blacksmiths were able to travel far and wide, thus bringing to Enri items from far away places. Some of these imported items have been unearthed in the burial chambers, in um, archaeological excavations at Ibouku, which under an, uh, an Akwanda um, situate as part of Unri uh, civilization. Excavations carried out so far in the Ibouku area revealed that the people had a flourishing metal working art. Three sites excavated um, so far reveal hundreds of ritual vessels and regalia, as well as the castings of a bronze heads uh, or leaded bronze um, that are among the most inventive and technically accomplished bronzes ever made. The people of Ibouku were the earliest smithers of copper and its alloys in West Africa. They worked the, the, the metal through hammering, um, bending, twisting, and uh, incising. They are believed to have been among the earliest groups of West Africans to use the um, highly advanced lost waxed casting techniques in the production of a bronze sculptures. Anda and, um, and Kwanda also has said that in addition to the bronze objects, um, elephant tusks, um, staff heads, uh, human and animal figurines, um, ritual ornaments, feathered hand fans, bells, whole and um, fragmented pottery, glass works, um, clay, as well as copper artifacts were discovered in one of the uh, Ibouku uh, burial chambers. Now, what this discovery affirms is the fact that the Umri were highly cultured and well-traveled people who may have had wide trade networks as far as, um, that spread as far as the, the Nile Valley the East African Swahili coastal areas and uh, the Trans-Saharan uh, trade network. The fact that the items found in the Ubooku um, excav excavations were wrapped in cloth and housed in a burial um, chamber also imply that the buried the people who were buried there were important personalities and possibly ancient is the Enri. The Enri began to diminish in prominence with the imperial incursions of the Igala and Benin, which began to reduce its spheres of influence. Of course, like other places in Africa, Enri's situation was further uh, complicated by the emergence of the Atlantic slave trade and its disruptive um, consequences. These factors led to the shrinking of the, of the kingdom and the recession um, of its uh, influence. 
by the time the European scramble and partition of um, Africa uh, took place, uh, um, Unri's position was already much diminished. The, the kingdom was, a, was then conquered and surrendered to Imperial Britain in 1911, thus marking the end of an ingenious, uh, scientific, technologically minded and egalitarian kingdom in southeastern Nigeria. Thank you uh, for watching the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please don't stop engaging us on our community platform by sending your comments and questions. And remember that we may not always have the answers to all the questions asked. So please share your knowledge and information with us and others on, on our platform. And don't stop sharing our videos. And of course, we need you to continue telling your contacts about this channel. See you next time.